Hi, Justyna and Kuba. We are a couple from Poland who travels around Europe in search of traces of our prehistory and inspiring places. And everything we find, we share with you in our videos. This time we are going to tell you about Peshmerl cave, that is Grotte du Peshmerl in France. This beautiful cave is famous for its prehistoric parietal art. Paintings inside the cave are younger than in Shiva cave, but older than in Lascaux. The Peshmerl is opened to the public, so with your own eyes you can see most of the wonders which it hides. We were there in June 2023, so listen what we learned and what we saw. Taking photos inside is forbidden, so we can't show you this magnificent cave. We are going to help ourselves with illustrations from the books we bought in the bookshop next to the cave. Most of our information about Peshmerl comes from the works of Michel Laure Blanchet, a leading French specialist in the field of Paleolithic art. Now retired, he was formerly the director of research at the French National Center of Scientific Research and curator at the Peshmerl Cave and Museum. His Art Pachetal Grottes Ornées du Corsi from 2010 is the summary of his 45 years of research. This is the book you see in some frames. The Peshmerl Cave has two levels. In the Paleolithic, people used only lower part of the cave. Parts with paintings are marked in sandy color in the drawing. Visitors come inside by an artificial entrance because Paleolithic one was sealed off about 10,000 years ago. It was a debris cone. This natural feeling helped to preserve the paintings and everything inside the cave. Most spectacular paintings and signs in Peshmerl are dating back around 29,000 years ago. The cave was used sometimes, probably without additional paintings, around 20,000 to 19,000 years ago. There also could be some rare visits about 12,000 to 10,000 years ago. Other remnants left by humans in the cave are some pieces of charcoal indicating the sporadic fires for lighting in front of the paintings, a few tools and some animal bones brought by people. These bones were left maybe after meals. Humans shared the cave with animals, such as bears, hyenas, panthers, badgers and foxes. Plenty of animal bones were found in the so-called ossuary. Most of these bones comes from cave bears who hibernated and died in the cave before humans ever arrived. The most common animal depictions in Peshmerl are mammoths. In second place are bisons, aurochs and horses. In the part inaccessible to visitors are three animals consisting of parts from different species. The cave has rather exceptional quantity of human depictions. They are mostly female figures, mainly headless. They are simplified and often look like someone halfway between human and animal. But at least one has a head. What is interesting, Peshmerl contains a depiction of so-called wounded man. There are also 12 black and red hand images and 7 bent thumb in images. The large number of red dots painted on the walls of the cave also draws attention. The cave is visited with a French-speaking guide. For foreigners, descriptions of all visited places have been prepared in the main European languages. They are taken from the basket at the entrance, where they are later put down for other guests. After entering inside, almost immediately you stop in admiration in front of so-called the Black Freeze. This painting completely fills a 7 meter long and 3 meter tall recess in the cave wall. The drawings range from a half to 1.2 meters in length and sometimes cover older paintings. 
The animals painted here form concentric rings or maybe a spiral. First, a huge horse was painted in the center of the niche. Next, a circle of bisons was added around the horse. Then, a white ring of mammoth was added. The final mammoth was added on the left side on the vaulted part of the wall. And in the end, the aurochs were painted below and to the right from the mammoth. The frieze was painted by a single group of artists or even by one artist. The same artistic convention, drawing technique and pigments are used all over the frieze. And there is no evidence that the artists corrected the painting or hesitated. Impressive, isn't it? Near the black frieze starts a ledge that allows walking near the ceiling. This space was hard to access during Paleolithic, but despite that, some images were placed there. People had to climb from both sides and now visitors have stairs there. The paintings on the ledge show mammoths and bisons. Some images are drawn only partially, the rest comes from properly lit rock. The shelf ends with the ceiling of hieroglyphic. Here the ceiling is covered with moon milk, which is soft and creamy layer where it is easy to leave traces. In this locality and in some other places, above big boulders on the floor and with similar layer, are Paleolithic finger fluting. They form a tangled web, mostly without any attempt at figuration. But in some places, some shapes can be seen. The most interesting are female figures, some without heads. So, we were on the ledge, the shelf near the ceiling of the cave. On one side of it, closer to the entrance to the cave, is the black frieze, and on the other, the ceiling with finger fluting. The ledge is decorated with painted animals. From the high position of the shelf is an excellent view of one of the most famous Paleolithic paintings, the Spotted Horses. This vast painting is located in the main hall of the cave. It is carefully balanced composition framed by stalagmite pillars in the space resembling natural temple. The Spotted Horses panel is 3.6 meters long and 1.65 meters high. The first elements which appeared on this rocky surface were bare scratches, then a red fish, a small circle and an indefinite shape. Then two strange horses were added. Our guide told that it was as a response to the rock natural shape like a horse head. Take a look at the following hand positions that serve as a screen for guiding the pigment in the blow painting technique. Then hands, most probably right and left hand. Notice that they are negatives created in blowing technique. And black dots. The dots also belong to blow painting. On the right side of the panel they form a horse like this. At the end, red dots, bent thumbs and two red rectangles were added. I don't know how they could bend their thumb so much. Researchers think that an individual artist painted the whole work of art because the same pigment was used for the horse's hands and black dots, and the hands come probably from one person. The black pigment is manganese oxide and barium, the red pigment is ochre. The cave tour ends with this fresco. We stood for a moment in silence, contemplating this masterpiece and those distant times. I will now describe the parts we have seen before because I chose this order to make the description more clear. So, we are in a big hall in front of the spotted horses. 
High above us, on the opposite wall, is the shelf with paintings. To the left, finger flutings. Near them is so-called wounded man. And some signs. Prehistorian Michel Loch Blanchet notices that the figure is similar to the man from Lascaux, but I'm not sure. Three red aviforms are attached to man's head. The aviform is a geometric motif so named by André Leroy Gouron because to him they looked like birds with extended wings. One sign is completed and two others are reduced to a right angle. Between the wounded men and the spotted horses are some boulders with paintings of women, mammoths, dots and a hand. Everything is in red color and the hand is smaller than these around the spotted horses. Michel Laure Blanchet thinks that these women and mammoths are lower down replicas of the ceiling finger fluting motifs. In this big hall, here and there, you can also see some nice images of animals. Everything I've talked about so far is the most spectacular part of the cave. But on the western side of the Great Hall, behind the finger fluting, is also a very interesting hall, though not as spectacular. It is without any parietal art, but some signs point that it was important. At the end of the hall, behind a curtain of stalagmites broken by Paleolithic people to clear a passage, there is a magnificent lithophone with a sonorous calcite stripe which was created during the rites in the cave. The bitter used to produce crystal clear sounds that echoed through the cave was a chopping tool made of river pebble. Researchers found it beside the lithophone. And on a kind of a shelf in this hole, scientists found some human footprints made by bare feet. Considering their size, they must have been made by a teenager. They must be Paleolithic because the cave entrance was sealed off by sediments at the end of this period. On the west side of the cave is also the narrow passage with engraved head of a bear. On the eastern side are two places where visitors aren't allowed. One is ossuary with animal bones and animal scratches on the walls. There are also finger flutings. The other is the combel. The extremely narrow tunnels lead to galleries there, so we weren't allowed to go there. At this point, it is worth mentioning that Michel Laure Blanchet notices some connections between bare claw marks and marks left by people. In this picture, you can see imitation and utilization of bare claw marks in the entrance of a narrow crawlway in the combel. In these narrow spaces, dots and some animals are painted. In the last, barely available small hole is exceptional painting. This painting, or rather a drawing, shows three non-existent animals. They are made up of parts of giant deers, horses, ibexes and mammoths. The panel is dominated by whole ceiling and huge stalactite breasts. Most have been decorated with red and black marks, confirming exactly what they represent. The whole panorama in this natural setting symbolizes the creation of life and a world where species were not yet separate. Michel Laurbanche, Perchmachl Cave. With this thought of an experienced researcher, I will end today's video. Please subscribe to not miss future contents and till the next time. Bye bye.